Perfect. All right. So yeah, thank you so much for having me today. I um, I'm just, I inner source comments. This was the very first community when I got into open source and open source program offices that I joined, and so now it's I believe we are in five years, almost five years of me being a part of this group, and I I'm just I'm just so honored that I get to be here again today. So thank you all so much. So. As mentioned, um, another huge uh, honored again, I will be speaking at the Inner Source Commons Fall Summit uh, this upcoming November, which is really, really exciting. And so this is going to be a two part talk, right? So I like to look at this talk as, you know, if you are gardening and just starting out, we are going to be tilling the soil and we're going to be planting the seeds. And then what we're going to be doing in the second companion talk, sorry, my dog is being silly. Um, the second companion talk is we're going to talk about the maturity of this SIG concept. So as mentioned, special interest groups in inner source. So um, a little bit about me. So <laughs> I uh, currently live in Cleveland, Ohio. I am a Temple University alumni where I studied education. I do work at Fannie Mae as the Open Source Program Office Strategist. I'm also a part of a few special interest groups underneath the Phenos wing, one of them being the Inner Source, um, the Inner Source Special Interest Group, where we are working with members from Inner Source Commons to really round out what it means to have inner source and financial institutions. And so we're doing a lot of cross collaboration there, which is really, really exciting. Um, this picture is pretty funny. I am an avid uh, American football <laughs> fan. Um, this is me at a Cleveland Browns game standing in the rain. We were very few folks were at this particular game last year, but it, it is what it is. I named my dog after a player um, and he, my dog, Bernie Kozar Jr., may be popping up from time to time. So today, we're going to just go over a few objectives, problem statement, what's a special interest group, some examples, why they're important, <laughs> what problems they can solve, how to get started, roles, and then potential expectations. So this is a very high-level chat today as part one of this series. So... You know, we realize when we work with large enterprises, many instances of work, development, and community is siloed, right? We we know that Intersource breaks these walls, changes technical culture, and really it, it is a fantastic solution to accelerating your development, but adoption is a challenge. And we can't go at adoption alone, so how can we change this? And so special interest groups, this is a great way to get started. So special interest groups, or, you know, sometimes folks call them communities of practice, right? There's hundreds, hundreds that exist in the open source space. I mean, currently we are in a special interest group right now underneath inner source commons, which is super exciting. And what this really means is they are formed by individuals, organizations, and enterprises with shared interest within many development facets for responsible, and I left out secure development. And here's some examples, right? So we have inner source commons, um, some special interest groups within inner source commons where I've definitely learned a lot. You know, when it first started out, the learning path group, that that group, they, they have done so much great work. Um, they're subject matter experts in their fields, and, absolutely fantastic you know the the patterns group inner source patterns you know now the inner source is really maturing and folks are really wanting to bring this into their enterprise we we find that the concept of patterns it just it, it we want to make sure that we are fitting the right development practices within the right space. So that's a couple of good examples of special interest groups here, as well as the metrics one. Um, you know, the to-do group, they have the Ospoology series. And so that's comprised of subject matter experts combining all of their education to really educate groups about open source program offices and open source. So that's a great example of a SIG. You know, the chaos organization focusing on open source metrics, which is great. 
Um, within Phenos, where I currently sit, I am a co-chair, co I believe is what we call them. Um, I'm in the inner source special interest group. We actually had a meeting today, and that was really nice talking about different sorts of development projects that we are working on there, which we will be widely sharing within inner source commons and then open source readiness within Phenos. That's another great group that I'm in as well, where we develop a lot of different content and context around open source and open source adoption within enterprises. <clears throat> so, you know, we realize that SIGs serve as catalysts for awareness, education, advocacy surrounding important practices. You can have special interest groups in many different facets of the work that we do outside of even development, like gardening groups and, you know, all different sorts of groups. But today we're really going to focus on development. So how does this fit into inner source, right? You know, many times when we come into these enterprises, we we do feel, and I felt this in former um, former spaces of work, we're working in the dark, right? There are people right down the hallway that are doing things that could impact in a positive way to accelerate your development. And they're right down the hallway, but we don't know that. You know, we 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 seek out teams where we need help, but we don't know where to start. And, you know, we know there are some teams that have reusable code, but they don't know how to share that code and they need guidance on how to share it. And, you know, we we were looking for those advocates to break that wheel of repetition. And so we really want to leverage this concept of inner source, but with the vast amount of content out there. Um, so many multiple resources, you know, everyone within our particular spaces, we do have time constraints and we are seeking ways to not only develop better, but also grow in our own technology fields, but we just don't know where to get started. And special interest groups, especially amongst inner source is, is a great way to go about it. So where can we start and you know i will say this time and time again and this is not just because i am here on this community call with inner source commons this is a really fantastic community and if you are not familiar with this community please i i really think join it join their slack community um just look at their websites look at their guidance um it's absolutely a great place to start but now let's talk about internally you know, we we do talk to our technologists, you know, we have multiple different people that we can talk to. So if you want to start a special interest group, especially around inner source, identify your champions, right? Sorry, my dog is being silly. Um, identify your champions. These are the folks that are in your company who are passionate about inner source and willing to champion the initiative. Sorry about that. Um, these champions will be crucial in driving the formation of your inner source special interest groups. Define your goals and objectives. So these are the things that you want to do before this end step here, seeking leadership. Define your goals and objectives. Clearly outline the goals and objectives of your special interest group. Determine what you hope to achieve through inner source practices within your organization, such as improved collaboration, knowledge sharing, or even faster project development with a secure edge. Build that cross-functional team. Assemble a diverse team of employees from different departments, roles, and levels of expertise. This ensures a well-rounded perspective and increases the chance of successful inner source adoption. One thing as well, so we're defining our goals, but we should also create a charter. We should create a charter, develop a formal charter that outlines the purpose, scope, and responsibilities of the SIG. Include details about how meetings will be conducted, decision-making processes, as well as membership criteria. Seek your leadership buy-in. Obtain support and buy-in from senior leadership or relevant stakeholders within your company. This is very important because you have their endorsement can provide the necessary resources and legitimacy to the SIG's activities. 
Now, as mentioning, so the things that you should be doing beforehand, defining your goals. Sorry, I had to kick out the dog. <laughs> um, so yes, defining your goals is very important identifying your internal champions, and then creating that charter before you seek that leadership buy-in. Now that you have leadership buy-in, it's time to communicate and promote. Raising awareness about your special interest group and communicating about its formation, right? The objectives to the employees across the company should be made very clear. Using those various communication channels, such as emails, internal newsletters, or company-wide meetings. Also, it's great to organize an inaugural meeting. First, have that meeting with your champions, and we'll talk about the roles of next. <clears throat> have that meeting with your champions, then you're going to host an inaugural meeting for your community. Now, that is going to encourage interested employees to attend and express their interest in potentially joining your special interest group. Now, you've had your inaugural meeting. In order for things to stay solidified, you have to have a regular meeting cadence. Establishing the regular meetings causes um, kind of a wave where folks know that every two weeks or every week they can come and seek knowledge from your subject matter experts and that stability causes growth. Developing a work plan. Now, your work plan outlines specific activities and projects that your special interest group will be undertaking to not only promote InnerSource, but also get InnerSource adoption within your enterprise. And assigning responsibilities and setting timelines to achieve these goals within your work plan is paramount for success. <clears throat> you also wanna foster collaboration. Encouraging collaboration and knowledge sharing amongst all of your SIG members. You wanna develop an environment where these members can openly discuss challenges, share their best practices and learn from one another. And you don't ever, just because someone may be new to the certain concepts of your special interest group, especially amongst inner source, but they're passionate about it, you wanna make sure that you encourage them to join because you are there to facilitate and teach as well, because that's the goal of the SIG. And then we have to measure progress. <clears throat> implementing metrics and key performance indicators to track progress around your inner source initiatives. When you meet with your leaderships and your stakeholders, ask them what is the most important thing to them and see how you can align that within your SIG. Because when leadership continuously buys in, then you're going to have a successful program and regularly review your metrics for these teams. So now, an example of a work plan. So it's guidance on getting started with inner source. So when you're starting off your SIG, you want to have guidance on getting started. You want to maybe develop personas around each team type, you know, within every enterprise. And you could identify these have particular patterns. They, um, you could find even sorts of different patterns within inner source commons patterns community. That could be a great place to get started. The concept of, you know, maturity models, you know, leveraging potential scorecards, maybe mapping against the open chain standard, and then also having presentations. Now, so that's where we're getting started. Now there are roles. Now, each one of these particular roles themselves could be one person. The work alone in each one of these roles is, is a very high work level, but if you do not have that large scale um, adoption yet, what you can do is you can combine roles. But I do not suggest one person trying to take on all of this work. Okay, so a facilitator. So this is really important too. Facilitators, they're responsible for leading the inner source special interest group. And you could do this as a rotation, but they set the meetings agenda, agendas, they schedule the meetings, they ensure that discussions stay on track. They really play a crucial role in fostering collaboration and communication amongst SIG members. 
you know, contributors that actively participate in the SIG by sharing their insights, knowledge, and experiences related to inner source practices. They could contribute to discussions, propose new ideas, and share case studies or best practices. You know, contributors are fantastic because they may want to be the ones that also assist with your documentation lead. You know, the documentation lead role really focuses on creating and maintaining documentation related to the inner source within the special interest group. And that could be different sorts of inner source processes, guidelines, you know, best practices. And it really helps to disseminate and create that knowledge base across your organization. Ambassadors, you know, they, everyone in the SIG should be an ambassador, but you could have folks that just want to pop in here and there, but they are also there to advocate for inner source within their respective teams and or departments across the enterprise. They provide guidance and expertise to SIG members about the technical challenges that they are facing in their particular, de their departments, and they could want to implement inner source solutions. So your ambassadors, best friends. Now, technical experts, they have a specialized knowledge in the specific areas of technology and tools within your company. You know, they, they know what is happening. They know what challenges that they're facing. And they really can provide guidance and expertise to help SIG members start addressing technical challenges as well as their groups when implementing inner source solutions. Mentors, they really assist. Mentors assist with um, newcomers or less experienced members of the special interest group because we know that folks want to be involved. So how can they get started? Some 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 people might be a little nervous to think like, well, everyone's been doing these this been in this inner source group for a while. I find it to be interesting, but how do I fit in? I don't know, but I know that I'm passionate about it. Have a mentor in your special interest group that can really navigate the principles and practices effectively, because eventually they, the, these, these younger people are going to come in and they're going to be the ones that are going to be leading the special interest group. And so you want to make sure that you can really support them. Now, researchers are really good because they focus on gathering and analyzing data related to your inner source adoption and how it impacts on the organization. You know, these folks are going to be conducting surveys, really identifying and collecting metrics, working with teams to create case studies and assess the effectiveness of the inner source initiatives. You know, these folks are going to be really working closely with your stakeholders, especially in regard to uh, leadership. So that's that's really important. You, and the communication coordinators, the those folks, you know, they are managing all of the communication channels with the SIGs, such as mailing lists, forums, or chat platforms. So as I'm going through each one of these roles, note how when you're currently in your inner source initiative within your company, how many of these roles are you personally taking on? And how, how much easier would it be if you had one person with each particular role really collaborating together, right? So that's that's kind of the goal. This is what I, as I was drafting these up, I was just thinking about how wonderful it would be if there was one person for each one particular role, but bundling them can make sense for now, you know? Uh, event organizers, you know, these folks, they coordinate workshops and webinars and conferences related to inner source. They create opportunities for your company within the SIG to learn from experts and share their experiences from a wider audience. You know, potentially you can bring in external speakers too from different sorts of communities and companies to talk about inner source, which is something that these folks would do. Quality assurance leads, let's say we have identified a project for inner source. Great. Now they would be working with the team members to ensure that their documentation is up to date. They would run particular unit tests. They would perform like quality gatekeeping and code review processes to maintain integrity of the external contributions. The metrics analysts would work very closely with the researchers because they're collecting and analyzing the data that the researchers have found, and they present that on an inner source project performance. They help the SIG really make informed decisions by providing insights to the effectiveness of the program itself. Now, governance, you know, it's our favorite word, right? Governance advisors, these folks really kind of know what's happening behind the scenes within your stakeholders. They could really kind of guide along the lines of the rules and policies that are currently in place at your enterprise, 
but also help establish new rules and policies along the inner source lines. You know, they are tightly, you know, coupled potentially maybe with your legal team or your infosec team. You know, they really guide decision-making processes that ensure fair and efficient project management. And then, you know, our favorite, the liaison to external groups, right? Working with um, lots of external communities, for example, like inner source commons, Finos, to do, you know, these folks are really there working with the external foundations and working with the subject matters there to learn um, and even share their stories on what they're doing. So lots of really strong roles here. And they're all really beneficial, you know, and they're very important roles. So, you know, let's say everything's perfect, right? So how are we going to document everything? So it's always good to create a dedicated space, having an internal customer facing portal to find all of this information that you all are all creating is huge. You know, folks are seeking information, have a place where they can find it. How do you collaborate? Well, you could have a GitHub or a GitLab collaborative space. Google Drive is always great for your teams if you're able to have that. Teams and Slack instances for uh, external, like your internal community to reach out with questions, as well as for your asynchronous working for your special interest groups. And then also Stack Overflow. So these are your dedicated spaces, right? We wanna make sure that um, people know where they can go. Creating a low barrier for entry is the best way to facilitate community. And so really starting an inner source special interest group, it does, it requires time, commitment, dedication, a collaborative spirit and support, right? You, you definitely need support to support that time um, that you want to spend on this because we know even though it may take a minute, you know, to spin up a special interest group, the long-term impacts themselves will be beneficial. That 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 has just been tried and proven. And through all of these following resources, you can lay the foundation for a successful inner source initiative within your company. So this was uh, my very high level talk about special interest groups, um, how to get started in different roles. This is just going to be a companion. So um, part one, and then we're gonna get a little bit deeper into uh, part two. So yeah, I'll open it up for Q&A or anything along those lines.